All right, we're going to start on exercise two, which is where we're going to take a piece of artwork that we enjoy, a two-dimensional piece of artwork. It can be a photo, it can be a painting, it should be color. It can be old, it can be new, and then we are going to learn how to build it into shapes, make a shape-based composition of it. And just from when you select your picture, you're already, already going to know what the format is, what the outside dimensions are. And so you'll know your parameters for how to fill that composition, whether it's complex or simplified. <coughs> right. So one way to do that, once you've chosen a, a piece of art that you want to, to work with, is to first identify the main shapes that are going on. And this is actually how uh, imaginative drawings work. So what I will do is actually make a new layer. And then I'm going to fill it with white. So let's say edit fill at 100% white. And I make a new layer by using that little post-it note within the layer window. Okay. And then I'm just going to take the opacity of that white, white layer and take it down to about 50%. So I have this haze. It's like tracing paper. Then I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to pick a color that's easy to see. And I'm partial to blue because I'm an old school illustrator that uses blue line pencil still. And then I want to set my brush at 100% opacity, 100% flow to be pressure sensitive with my tablet, so one of these two, and I want the hardness to be pretty pretty hard, so about 90%. I want the size to be maybe about 70 pixels, but it depends on the resolution of the image you're working with, so that I can just draw and get a nice shape, okay? So I am not drawing on the image itself. I am drawing on this blank or this white filled layer on top at 50% opacity, just like tracing paper. For basic shapes, I'm going to be using combinations of circles, ovals, rectangles, squares, triangles, and wedges, which are like triangles with their top cut off, to build this. And you want to go with your, your biggest, most dominant shapes first. So I can see a really large triangle right here that kind of ties the whole composition together. Heads are very typically ovals on humans. This tiger's head is simplified into almost a perfect circle. I'm looking for the biggest shapes first, working simple to complex. Okay, here we have kind of a big oval. And notice I'm always completing the shapes. And it's okay to overlap them. And then we have a wedge shape for the legs with a triangle cut out of it. So let's see how we're doing. We can turn that off. You can see how that composition is working. We have a little bit of distraction here. Kind of fills in an oval. But I'm not worried about all the complexity of these curves yet. I just want to get the big general shapes down. And then we have a shape here off to the side. Okay, those might be my dominant shapes that are making this composition work. And then if you've taken drawing and you've, you've played with a figure drawing before, you know that when you're drawing characters, it's a little different. So I'm going to do another one, edit fill, that just shows me the character attributes. Put it at 50% and now I'm going to pick red. And this might be good for you to do if you're want a little practice with character design and drawing from the imagination. With a character's basic shapes, I still use the same sort of shapes, but I want to think of what the skeleton is doing, what's called the figure template. And that all flows on a gesture, kind of the curve of the spine. So that is the gesture of that figure. And then I want to know where the joints are, and I might indicate those with circles. And then there's the rib cage, which is the barrel shape. Okay. There's the cranium, which is the top of the skull, and then the jaw, the mandible. And then there is 
the joints of the arm, the elbow. And James Jean has to do this when he designs this character so that everything looks believable. And there's the hand. And so this elbow has to be believably go underneath the, the tiger's jaw. You have the hips, you have the leg joints, and the legs. So if we just look at that, that's the, the skeletal template of the female character in this picture. Where's her hand? Let's see. Yeah, we don't see, I think it's grabbing her belt right there. So we can close that up right there. Her, angle, her wrist is at an angle. So you put those two together, you really can understand it. If I do another layer, and this just gives you practice over and over again, edit fill with white, take it down to 50%. I can turn off some of these. I can now do the same thing with the tiger layer, and I'll pick another color, maybe a green for this. So I have the, the cranium shape, and then the mandible for the tiger is, is more like a wedge at the bottom. Because I want to see where the tiger is looking, I do what are called a direction lines through the head. If I want to do that for where the female character is looking, they would cut across like that to show where her eyes are. Now the spine of the tiger is running through like that, so that's the gesture. And then you have the shoulders of the tiger, but of course one of those shoulders is behind her, so it's called drawing through. And then the joints of the legs coming through like this. So you have the front of the, the rib cage, and then the rib cage going all the way back, going along the spine to the hips. So if we take all these shapes together, we can see how this composition is working. Now the important reason for that isn't to match something you already see. It's to be able to tinker with shapes before you have to refine them. And art tends to work in this way. Once you have the sketch that you like, you can then refine the lines and build color behind them. And then you're just building shapes behind your line work until you have your finished product. And that's how digital artwork is done. It all starts with a sketch, whether it's on the computer or whether it's done by hand and then scanned in and worked on top of. And from there, we get to our finishes. And those sketches all work through understanding basic shapes. All right, now what you can do, just to remember this, is to save it, but I would make each of these a multiply layer so they overlap with the background. And you can see the shapes underneath. That's how everything is working. And then you can save that as a PSD with your name, I'm going to call it a basic shapes study of reference. And that will help you know what's important when you start building this as a shape composition. I'll save it as a PSD, a Photoshop format, onto my desktop. Remember, if you need to navigate to the desktop, just hit Command D, and it will put you there. Hit Save, and then you can hit F11 to make sure it went there. Carl Fry, Basic Shapes Reference, right there. All right. That's good preparation before we start building shapes.